What's up, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here, and this is the video that you've been waiting for seven years with the Fiat 500. Now, I didn't buy the cheapest Fiat 500 in America, and I'm not restoring it into a Domino's delivery vehicle. You can't read about this car on autotrader.com slash oversteer, and I don't wrench on this thing every day. But I've had a lot of fun things happen to me over the last 12 months with this Fiat. So let's dive into that now. She still looks pretty good you know the fiat 500 design on these little ones has not changed at all really so uh you know some changes via the versions uh especially on the front fascia is where you notice it but um so far so good now i do want to hit up a couple things ago uh that i already did and you saw my last video i replaced the wheels and tires i needed some new tires it was probably a little early to replace them but i really wanted these wheels now they're pretty dirty here obviously the automatic car washed in dress them up to tune well but uh, because they're 16 inches you definitely can notice the ride quality difference as soon as you put them on so it's a little stiffer a little sharper uh, a little harsher because you're picking up more of that uh, you know roughness and uh, you know imperfection in the road through the steering and it follows the grooves of the road a little bit more but you become used to it right away and as you know on any car when you put on lower profile tires larger wheels that's kind of the nature of it but I I really like it I'm glad I did that and at the time the other thing I I want to say here is that the TPMS, the tire pressure monitoring sensors, had to be swapped from my old tires because they, the NTB that I went to couldn't get the actual sensors that this car uses. I thought they'd just be regular Dodge or Chrysler, but apparently not. Now they swapped them over and I've had no problems with that. So hopefully, you know, the original batteries in these things uh, or however they transmit is, is going on seven years now and they still work just fine. So pretty good. The other thing I want to say is just last week, um, I went and took this car to get an emissions test in Illinois. You need to get an emissions test every two years in a pass with flying colors. Basically, it's not a rolling road type of test. They just plug it in anything with the ODB2. They just plug it in and make sure you don't have any codes. So that passed with flying colors. Now, the other thing I want to say here is that uh, over the last year, I replaced the wiper blades. And as you can see, this one is really small and this one is really long. And I also replaced the back one. And this one actually took me a little while to figure out how to remove this wiper blade. So I did a video on that if you're replacing that and so all the wiper blades have been replaced it's not very expensive it's an easy thing to do and you know you'll definitely start noticing that they're not wiping very well now a couple things on the bad side and you can check out my videos I've tried pulling some dents and as you can see here you can maybe see a little ripple in the door I do have some door dings a lot of these are self-inflicted wounds from parking next to my other car and just not being super careful about it this one is pretty old but you can see it kind of chipped the paint a little bit i have some all all over um you know mostly because the doors are so big and flat you know generally you get a big curved piece there you can normally see them but let's just revisit the one up here let's see if i can find it i think it's right here might be a little tough to see you might be able to see a little discoloration right there but there's just a little bit of a ripple. And that was from, I, I'm not sure if that was from my one year or two year review, but I think I did that myself by taking some things down off the shelf next to the car. But just wanted to say, hey, you know, happy fifth or sixth anniversary to that little ding right there. But overall it looks pretty good and you can do some things to minimize the dings. Let's go on to the decals here. I talk about these every year and I'm like, they're starting to get a little old. You can see kind of the edge peeling up there. Uh, these were aftermarket decals that I bought on eBay and applied myself. And you know what? Seven years in, I'm pretty impressed with them because they are still hanging on. Now, here is where you can really see the jaggedness uh, and where they're kind of peeling away. I think you could probably treat these a little bit better than I have over the years. You know, this is heavy sunshine in the summer and heavy salt and snow in the winter. 
but as you can see at a glance they still look pretty good and I love the fact that they break up the uh, color here if you don't have this decal or any decal I've seen some down here on the bottom and they all do the kind of the same thing they break up a lot of this big chunkiness of the car and so I really like that that I want to bring up something else that I was thinking about and one of the reasons one of several reasons that I really held off on doing this review instead of doing in July I'm obviously doing it in September is because I was kind of kicking around a few things now I didn't end up doing them one of them and I'll pull it out here is having uh, a decal place actually remove my decal and do a two-tone apply vinyl wrap um, all from this body line right here up of glossy black so having the whole top including the front of the hood kind of that top part of the hood from this body line up to be a glossy black and that's because I've seen some of the Fiat 500 you know I think maybe the more of the European versions were in the special editions where it's really a two-tone you know and having that glossy black top covering the top I thought would break up the kind of the bulk kind of the chubbiness of the car a little bit and really be a little bit different now I, I didn't do that you know when I kind of searched around on vinyl wraps I'll be honest like some of the ones around here they wanted like a thousand bucks for it I don't think that's outrageous for what they do it seems like it's really labor intensive but it was just more than this car is worth by a long shot and so didn't do that obviously I haven't pulled off these decals yet either but and I'm not really sure what I'm going to do on them I could just take a hair dryer and start peeling them back but uh, to be honest with them not being totally oh I don't know egregiously um, offensive at this point I'm kind of just leaving them because I'm not sure what I would do when I get them off otherwise the paint looks pretty good you know and I don't do anything obviously I don't didn't do like a um, a ceramic coating or even wax it uh, particularly and most of the time I don't even wash it but generally this metallic grigio paint man it still looks good um, and maybe because I never wash it, I don't have any micro scratches in it. I mean, I, you do. You, you can kind of see some of that. But for a seven-year-old car, I think the paint actually looks pretty damn good. Now, one of the things that was a little odd to me is on year three, and you can probably check my video about it, you know, between the third and fourth year, the battery in this car died in the middle of winter. It probably had a little age on it, and the, the harsh winters that we get here were probably just too much to overcome, and it died <laughs> unexpectedly. I was using the car all day long, drove it around, running errands, it started up, went home, uh, unloaded the car, started tried to start it up to move it, and the battery was dead. So, you know, that kind of spooked me a little bit after three years, and I said, hey, you know what, on my sixth year, I'm just going to replace the battery again. Now, here I am in seven years later, and I'm on that second battery which is just an aftermarket battery i got from autozone so i'm not sure if the original fiat batteries were a little bit mm, less uh capable than the aftermarkets but this one now is going on four years and i haven't had any problems with it and i was thinking maybe proactively replacing it but haven't done that and i'm kind of curious just to go through the winter here and see how it goes without doing it now the other thing is um air conditioning on this car i've complained about it in some of my other videos in that it just doesn't blow super cold in fact on a typical 90 degree day in the summer what you actually have to do is you have to crank it all the way to setting four kind of all the way max and sometimes if it's pressing 100 which you can here in chicago you actually have to set it to recirculate the interior air so uh you gotta you know you gotta really blast it and for a very small um you know cockpit or cabin volume you wouldn't think you'd have to blast the air quite that much now my car isn't even black it's dark colored so that's not going to help and i have the windows tinted like a uh i don't know it's a 40 percent tint or something and so that helps kind of cool it off a little bit too or keep it cooler so i'm a little surprised about that that has been the way this car has been since the beginning now i did buy a can of refrigerant to recharge the ac i figured maybe we've had a little bit of a loss of refrigerant so i thought i might just top it off i don't think it's low uh, by any means but I thought I would do that I haven't done it yet because now it's starting to cool off and I don't really use the AC that much but I kind of kind of curious if it if it's just the lack of capability from the the stock air conditioning if it is a little low on refrigerant if it came a little low from ref with refrigerant from the factory I'm not sure but I'm gonna just uh, attach that thing and just gonna squeeze it a little more um, in, until I'm kind of at the top of the green zone on AC. So that's one of the things I'm gonna do here at home. Now, 
this is the external look of the car and I want to go to the interior now. As we go inside, I've got my key here and one of the things I want to show you is this is a an aftermarket, or it's not aftermarket, it's actually from Fiat. It's a key cover that you can replace. You can check out my videos on doing that um, on your own. But what they are, they, they're just plastic with like these this silk screened on paint. Now what I did with this key cover before I put it on, I just took some, you know, duplicolor clear coat from AutoZone and uh, sprayed it with some clear coat to kind of keep the the, the paint from peeling off and give it a little more glossy look and what you can see here is that over the years this has gotten beat up a little bit and that clear coat is kind of starting to peel off now at a glance this key still looks fantastic actually um, I'm really surprised about that how well the clear coat worked at just preserving this key cover but I love the fact that you can customize these a little bit obviously I don't have a red um, Fiat but I definitely like this little Italian flare uh, the Italian flag flare to the key fob itself and it still works very well um in fact you know I, the, i've never had to replace these batteries now one thing i will say is that the range on this bad boy is not great if you're more than 30 feet away from the car that's usually well within the range of the remote for most vehicles but on this particular car you got to be i don't know 15 feet or closer that's just what i found so let's take a look inside all right so jumping inside here, a couple things I want to show you, and it's showing it on the, the instrument cluster right there. Seven years, 73,383 miles. Now, now I want to point that out. What's a little weird about this particular Fiat is how um, uh, uneven the mileage accrual has been. So when I first got this car, I didn't drive it that much. I actually worked very close to home, and so for the first you know, probably three years, I actually put very few miles on it. Then I took, or my office moved with my job, and I ended up putting like 80 miles a day on it. So for the next three or four years, about well, three years, um, I ended up daily driving it and using it on the weekends and put on a lot of miles. And then a couple years ago, I switched jobs to a place much closer to my home. And so now I only put on, you know, 16 miles a day. So I've, I kind of broke the car in easy, then I kind of put a lot of highway miles on it for a few years, and now I'm back down to a very low mileage accrual rate. And so, you know, while I'm actually still a little under what I think is typical or average driving for most uh, drivers, um, this probably won't grow uh, super fast. Probably won't, won't continue to grow as fast as a lot of the typical drivers. Uh, the other thing I want to say here is that the average gas mileage, uh, I'm not even sure what it is, so I'm going to see if we can find this. Average economy A, 24.4 miles per gallon. Now, I'm gonna tell you what, um, I'm not thrilled with that. You know, I got this car because it was small and it was one of the best mileage cars at the time. Seven years ago, the, the pickings for, uh, you know, really fuel efficient cars was a little slim. You know, the Prius was out, but most cars were still in that 20 mile range. And this one a uh, advertised, you know, 30 plus. And now I did some highway driving, especially when I had the longer trip, but I'm actually, um, not thrilled with this, but I'm not disappointed. You actually might say, Pete, 24 MPG on this car, you know, a small car like this with a one liter engine is terrible. Uh, but I don't drive that far. I drive about seven and a half miles to work each morning um, and then back. And so the car doesn't really have a long time to warm up, get to temp. You know, and cars run rich when you start them up until the, they get warm enough that the oxygen sensor kind of uh, optimizes the fuel air mixture. And so part of my problem is I have such a short commute, I don't think we ever really get that. And on top of that, it's all uh, suburban back roads driving. So even though it's like seven and a half miles, it's like a 20 minute drive. And so it's a lot of stop and go, and it's just not really conducive to getting good fuel mileage. So, um, you know, I actually don't think this is bad. 24 MPG, you know, where a lot of cars are probably getting in the, I'd say probably the high teens is what I'm guessing on, on a very similar drive. So, you know, keep that in mind. I think that's kind of important to, um, to understand. Now I did fire up the car here and it fired up just fine, but on this time, but I do want to talk about, um, what happens on some of these long starts. So I'm just going to turn it off here again and I want to start it up and just see what happens. What I've noticed is that sometimes I get what seems like long starts. You've got to hold the key noticeably longer and it's kind of gives it a crank or two. Now, 
Um, as you saw, you know, with 70 plus thousand miles on it, I will admit to you, I have not had this car tuned up. I actually bought spark plugs. I bought the little uh, universal socket joint that you need to get the 110 millimeter uh, screw out on the um, the cover, the engine cover, because I wanted to replace that. I wanted to replace the, the um, air filter. Um, I'm not sure if this has a, a fuel filter that is replaceable, but I just thought, you know, the original spark plugs on this, you know, now have 73, almost 74,000 miles on them, and I've never changed them, and I really think that's probably the biggest problem. Now, uh, because I haven't tuned it up and I think the car is starting up fine I, and I do want to do that before the winter you know when it really kind of gets harder to do it um, I'm, in, I'm actually impressed and I'm not surprised that I'm getting a little bit of a longer starts on a few times not very reliably but a few times that can happen and just with the age of uh, you know all the engine components I, I so I, I'm, I'm really actually quite impressed on that in fact the last few times that I've gone for oil changes at the Fiat dealership they've told me man you are way overdue for a tune-up probably probably but things are running just fine so I haven't done that yet now I want to back out of the car here and I want to show you the interior and this is one this is the big reason that I held off on doing this review and the reveal here is that I have the exact same stock seats that I've always had you know this uh, leatherette or vinyl top and then you know this cloth seat here which is pretty nice um, there's only one armrest and that's always kind of been one of my bugaboos I've always kind of wanted a second armrest uh, for the for for guests because you know if you have a passenger on there they always tend to use your armrest but this was the what I was um, struggling with is that I've been watching on eBay for uh, sets of seats from Fiat 500s and sometimes they come up um, you know eBay is probably not the best place car-part.com is probably a better place but they sell them individually so sometimes it can be a little hard to find you know the full set that you need and it, obviously they're coming from broken cars wrecked cars salvage cars so um, you don't always get you know every seat that you need right sometimes just the driver's seat is salvageable sometimes just the passenger seat etc but on ebay there were a couple of seats that uh you know that were black leather one of those sets had the armrest on the passenger seat too and i was torn man i think it's still up on ebay i, I want to say the whole thing was like 800 dollars for the front and the rear seat um, and 200 dollars for shipping so it was going to be a thousand bucks for all the seats and as far as i can tell replacing them is generally pretty easy it's i think it's four bolts you do want to disconnect your battery because of the airbags and whatnot in here um, but I thought, man, the leather would kind of give me a little bit richer, more luxurious feel. The, the full black would be pretty slick looking. Uh, getting that second armrest would be a nice upgrade. And if I resold it, I would think that, you know, a lot of customizations to cars don't result in additional value, but that might actually help over the claw seats. Um, the leather is, you know, measurably less superior, I think. You know, they, they get really hot in the summer, they get really cold in the winter. Claw seats have a big advantage and I've really enjoyed being able to jump in this car. You know, when I've parked at O'Hare, sometimes in our polar vortex for a long time in the long-term economy parking and jump back in, you don't have to worry about getting like stung with cold leather seats. But um, despite that, man, I didn't, I decided not to do it. I was like, I just don't know that there's anything intelligent about sinking a thousand dollars into a car i'll talk a little bit about the residual value here of this bad boy but um you know it just it just that that's too much if i could have found like something at a local salvage yard for a couple hundred bucks to 400 bucks for a set yeah maybe i would have done it but i just couldn't bring myself to do it there's also a site i think called leather seats where you just they will make you the recovers uh in leather that'll fit your existing ones but man once i saw that you have to take out the seats you've got to take out the these panels you've got to undo the little clips you got to stretch everything on man it just seemed like a lot of work and then even the covers there were like eight or nine hundred dollars so it wasn't a super super uh you know worthwhile expenditure in my opinion you know especially on this car you know if you were dressing up your porsche 911 that had worn seats or um you know your maserati or something yeah then it, it totally makes sense but because the cost is pretty much the same regardless of the type of car you have <sighs> customizing a cheap car is 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 tough it's tough to do have a lot of friends that do it can't say i haven't done it myself sometimes but it is what it is so anyway because i was really kicking that around that's what held me back i was thinking should i do it get it use it as a little project make a video about it and then do this update afterwards but when i finally finally nixed that uh, i decided to go ahead and do my seven year update on this bad boy 
that's the one that kind of pains me the most just because I think that would actually, uh, you know, I talked about it last year, a little owner fatigue on this car. It's just kind of the same thing. It's not bad. Everything's nice. Uh, there are some things that are starting to get a little dated on it, but, uh, you know, overall as a commuter car, and because it's so small, I can get into any parking spot, especially at my office. And there's also something to be said, you know, there are a lot of people drive some nice cars in my office and I kind of like rolling in in the cheapest, smallest, oldest car there. Um, Obviously, some of the things that I showed you before that show a lot of wear, the plastic on the handle here, uh, this big plastic piece on the door panel just tends to get scratched up with things. You know, it's actually held up pretty well. I think the dashboard is probably the strongest piece of this car, especially when the body color paint this piece, that just never kind of goes out of style. You kind of see this and it looks pretty premium. Uh, and you kind of forgive, even though they've done a nice job of texturing, you can see like the pebbling on the, the plastic here. It's still hard plastic, but it doesn't look like that smooth, crappy plastic that you get in a lot of GM cars. You know, this is all hard plastic here too, but again, you get that little uh, pebbling around here. Now, the biggest thing that probably dates this car is the fact that it has no big head unit display. You still just get this orange display for radio and CD. Obviously, I'm using the CD slot for a phone holder here, uh, but you know, the thing that you really, really like on modern cars is having a display there. And the big thing for me, and I get that they're only in cars that are from the last few years, is Apple CarPlay. Having the integration with your phone be that seamless is awesome. Having all those controls, having the GPS directions up here is sweet. And I, you know, if you haven't tried a car with Apple CarPlay, you know, if you're gonna go rent a car, a lot of the GMs have them, man, it's awesome. It's hard not to want that. Yeah, I could put in a, aftermarket head unit. The problem is here, it's not really even a single DIN space. It's kind of this weird curved shape. Uh, they do, I've seen some aftermarket companies replace this whole thing with smaller vents so that you can get a screen in there. On the new 500s, they actually have a little bit of a, a hump here where they they put in because it's just not enough real estate here that the screen is kind of floats a little bit. So I've done that. The other thing I've got here, and I did a review on this, is this MPOW wireless phone holder. I really like it. And as you can see, it fits into the CD mount there. And so I've got my phone right where I want it. A couple things that are a little different from the Zing that I had before. Obviously, the wireless charging is pretty nice. I replaced this cable so that, you know, when I drop in my iPhone XS Max, it automatically charges and it's adjustable. A couple things that I will tell you that are a little tricky with this is that you've got to get this bottom piece in so that the coils match up. But because it's so long, it really covers up this display. My Zing, um, you know, <laughs> was a, sat a little higher so I could see this display. So you can't see the buttons, you know, after a long time, you can just kind of feel them. But um, I'm also getting a little button wear on the two and the one there. Um, where I'm pressing them a lot, but you kind of have to come up from the bottom. So keep that in mind, but I really love having this. That's about, <laughs> that's my substitute too for having Apple CarPlay is just having my iPhone up there. And with the Bluetooth integration, it's pretty good. The other thing I will show you here is that I still have, and uh, is this little USB um, Bluetooth receiver. That's how I um, broadcast music through the media button here, through the media input so that I can play music on my iPhone and listen to it in my car. So that is, you know, what I'm continuing to do. So it gives me a pretty high tech experience, but obviously, you know, it's no substitute for CarPlay. Now, um, that's kind of everything inside. Everything else is pretty much the same. I really like it. Uh, I've got my remote for the garage up here. I would have loved, you know, universal remotes built in. Seems to be very standard on Chrysler, but obviously didn't make it to the Fiat. Now let me talk to you a little bit about the final thoughts on what's going to happen here with the Fiat. And this is why one of the reasons that I didn't go ahead and replace those seats is because I was thinking, well, you know what? This may be the last year with the Fiat because I said that in my last video that this may be my last year with the Fiat. Now, I've kind of come to some decisions and I think they might surprise you a little bit. The car I really, really want right now is the BMW i3. I want a used one. I've seen them with like 15,000, 20,000 miles on it. Uh, and the one I want is the with the range extender, the Rex. So uh, the i3 only gets like 80 miles to the gallon if, for the used, or 80 miles to the gallon. 
uh, 80 mile range on its electric battery. The new ones get, you know, I think about 100, but you know, they're much more expensive. And so what I really wanted is a i3 range extension so I could get it an 80 mile range, which would be perfect for day to day driving. I, w I wouldn't even have to charge it every day because my commute is so short, but then having that range extender would allow me to go on the road, you know, drive to Detroit, drive to see my friends, drive to other parts of the Chicago suburbs, which can actually be 60, 80 miles away, uh, and then be able to get home without worrying about, you know, range. Now, um, the used car market for i3s isn't bad, but they're not giving them away by any means. And I will say they are giving away Fiat 500s. <laughs> this, you know, 2012 model, which I actually bought in 2011, uh, is not commanding very strong money. Um, with about this mileage, what I can see is that they've kind of bottomed out a little bit at about a few thousand bucks. I don't know if this one would get 2,500. I don't know if the upgraded wheels would help me out a little bit on this. I've been really good with this car. You know, <laughs> you can't really abuse it. It's not like you'd go out and race this bad boy. But um, they're just not commanding a lot of money. I think they make a great starter car. To be honest, you know, a car with 70,000 plus miles on it would kind of worry me. But I have no doubts if, you know, especially if I put in a new battery, new spark plugs, maybe topped off the AC, that this car is in really good shape. It doesn't have the creaks and rattles that a lot of older cars get, especially in the suspension, which is, which really kind of surprises me because it has a very low tech suspension, particularly in the back there. Um, and so I haven't had to worry about that. Uh, so the car has really been pretty bomb proof, uh, in my opinion. So the answer to the question that you're asking is, are you going to see an eight year review on this? And the answer right now is absolutely, I'm going to keep this. And to be honest, uh, I was thinking, why would I replace this, spend some money on another commuter car? Why not get a car that maybe is a little more fun? You know, if I, if I were going to get an i3, it would really be just marginally bigger than this, a little bit larger back seat, which would be nice in case I had to carry some people around with me. But the i3 is really just kind of a small upgrade from this. And again, I'd have to lay out a bunch of money. Why wouldn't I just keep this for my commuter car and get something maybe more fun instead of spending 15 or 20 grand on i3? Three, why not get like a used Boxster or a used Cayman, uh, Cayman probably more likely, or something like that. I mean, in the 15 to 20 grand range, I mean, you can get some used Maseratis, you know, just why not get a fun car and still commute in this because it's perfect for my commute on a day-to-day -day basis. It's just, it's just me trying to get into small, tight parking spots. So the reality is at this point, I don't know that I'll ever get rid of this until the sucker dies because it's a perfect commuter car. Um, you know, and in, even in the winter here in the Midwest winters, this thing has been a trooper. Um, you know, starting up, no problem. Like I said, a polar vortex getting through snow, you know, even some pretty deep snow where my terrain has gotten. Uh, stuck sometimes. So I'm really enjoying this car. It's it's really serving its purpose quite well. And it kind of allows me then to get something that maybe not, isn't a, an all year car, an all year round car, right? Something else that I could put in my garage that might be a little more fun. So I don't know that I'm going to do that. Obviously, you know, I'm going to try to pinch the pennies here and the cash flow is always kind of tight as um, it always is. So, you know, I'm not going to race out to get anything, but the reality is um, not only do I expect there to be another review a year from now, but probably one, two years from now too. So we'll see. But otherwise, this thing has been a trooper and I've really, really enjoyed it. So if you are thinking about getting a used Fiat 500, I wouldn't sweat it, man. I know a lot of people have commented before they picked one up because they've been following these um, commentaries and, you know, I haven't had a lot of problems. So I don't know. That's just one guy's experience, one data point for y'all, but I love it. Check it out. You can see my earlier reviews on uh, the channel here too, but appreciate you guys following me. Peter Von Panda with my Fiat 500. Out.